over the last uh, couple of years, I've had chronic migraine, and I couldn't even be in this room. That's how bad my headaches um, are when they, you know, when, when I get them. And that's the only thing that really gives me some kind of relief is is going to see him. So, you know, I'm a testimony um, for Dr. Scarlett and what he does. Not just is he great at what he does. Uh, he's very knowledgeable. He's given me some great advice and tips on nutrition and, and taking care of yourself. So I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Edward Scarlett. Please make him feel welcome. I, um, I, I met a lawyer, an attorney at the chamber group here last week too, and I was telling him that when Dorian came, I was moving everything around in the house and I broke this huge mirror, and I was upset about it because my family told me that I was going to have like seven years of bad luck, but the attorney says he can get it down to five, so I'm feeling better about that. <laughs> so, so anyways, thank you again for inviting me. So um, what I'll do is I'll tell you about who I am, what I do, why I do it, how it might help you or someone that you know. Maybe you've had these kind of modalities before, maybe you haven't. Uh, so I'll bring a little insight to that, share that, and maybe there's something that I say here today that may have a little bit of value for you or someone that you know. Because I believe that if you make a difference in someone's life, you know, it'll affect your business, it'll affect people around you. And I think that's what we all do by supporting each other, whether it's business or whether it's through things like health or whether it's through networking and socializing. So, I am a Florida State licensed acupuncturist. I hold a national diplomat. I have eclectic training, studied functional biological medicine, injection therapy. I'm just finishing up my yoga 300 hour training program. It's probably more like 400 hours because it's a big part of my life and it also helps a lot of individuals. So I'm excited about finishing that up here in about two weeks. Um, I'm very eclectic in my training because when I grew up, I grew up as kind of a Mr. Fix-It guy. So, you know, if you're doing a plumbing job or you're doing an electric job, you need different tools. And so I've learned a lot of different things. You know, my licensure as an acupuncture physician allows me to do 50, 60 different kinds of modalities. These days I've kind of honed it down to what's needed because of what walks through my door. Most of the people that walk through my door, it's pain condition because they go online and they look and they see that there's data there showing that acupuncture is extremely effective for pain and it is and I'll get into that a little bit so just my story a little bit is I grew up on a lake in upstate New York and started in grandma's hot dog and hamburger stand learning about customer service learning how to about change show up for work on time and you know that that really shaped and formed me to start interacting with the public at an early age and I think the reason why I became a Mr. Fix-It guy was because my dad was like that also so as a teenager, I worked at many different kinds of establishments and I learned in the hospitality industry. You know, I just kept following through with that. <clears throat> Built my skills and my ability. Then when I was about 26, I decided I was gonna move to Florida with my high school sweetheart. We knew someone down here. I didn't wanna grow up in the same town, we're on the same bar stools, everybody else. So we sold everything, packed up, moved down here. Then what happened to me is I was living in Highland Beach, a landlord friend of mine handed me a book on microbiotics. Now this is a book that's written for 16th century monks. But what happened as a 26 year old, when I read this book and realized that food wasn't about calories and vitamins and minerals, that if you ate a sweet potato that grew in the ground <clears throat> versus a broccoli floweret that grew above the ground, it had an energetic effect on your body. Now this was 30 years ago. Nowadays, you know, we're kind of way past that, but that changed my thinking that there's energy and food and it makes a difference on your energy. So I wanted to learn everything I could about that. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I started working in establishments that cook that kind of food which had very special techniques that you had to use. Eventually I bought my own little health food cafe down in Miser Park on Boca and I was working there selling my food, had a pretty good lunch business, was selling it to uh, health food restaurants and a man walked in and he wanted a part-time job. Hired him, we became friends, he was working for me, my lease was coming due and I was waffling on what I wanted to do. Like, I had an opportunity to cross the street with another person. I, the landlord wanted me to use a bigger place. Anyways, he said, if you're not sure, come to Miami and see what I'm doing. And he was going to school to learn how to be a practitioner of oriental medicine. So I moved to Miami and I, 
I actually sold the business. I went to an open house and I was so excited about helping people with this, more so in the food. I sold that, that cafe and I moved to Miami and enrolled in the school. And I was doing a fundraiser at the Doral upstairs and the executive chef was there and I asked him if I could have a job. And he said, and one thing led to another. So I ran the upstairs Doral restaurant for three, three and a half years at night and went to school during the day for to become a practitioner of acupuncture. So that's how I came about it, <clears throat> was through food. And you know, I have a brother that's still involved in food, you know, kind of proud of him. He's president of Outback. So went to school, and a lot of people don't realize that this is about a 2,000-hour training program. And so we have to, you know, a lot of times people think, or they used to think, that acupuncture was kind of a, you know, maybe a weekend course or something. But it's, you know, you need a bachelor's, you need seven or 800 hours in oriental medical theory, you need, to, you know, five, 600 hours of clinical training, and you need the biosciences and the counseling and communication. I did a lot of training in these kinds of things after school also. Uh, that's part of what made me eclectic. So like Chris was saying, my practice is in Delray, done hundreds of thousands of treatments. Uh, when I was in acupuncture school, I met a woman. I, ent I ended my high school sweetheart relationship. We went to Orlando to a workshop and there was a woman there and uh, she said her husband was an acupuncturist and I said, uh, I see there's a practice for sale. Do you know anything about it? And she said no. And then 10 minutes later she said, I lied. That's our practice. So bought this practice, had a baby, got married all in the same year and that was in 1991. So that's, that's how, and this is what happens when you come to see me after all that training, here's how a treatment looks. So, and that's because all acupuncturists tend to be backstabbers, but it's because we just want to get to the point, you know, so. Uh, real quick, the family, just to give you a little more depth than that, my do oldest daughter finishing up her master's here next month, Sharon, I have two sons, uh, one owns his own air conditioning company at 24, my other son's going over to Gold, uh, Gulf Coast University, he's going to be biomedical engineering, my daughter Andrea, me and my fiance Sue at the Renaissance Fair around the corner from here, we love it every year, we get out and dress up and play and stuff, it's a great time, so that's the family. Purpose, you know, the idea here is to help clarify what's causing the problem as a holistic practitioner, right? So whatever your health concern is, what I'm really good at is pulling apart the knot to find out how you got in that condition and then what's the cascading order on how you're going to get out of that. So, you know, I use non-toxic, effective, natural, affordable solutions, right? That's the key. How to help people as soon as you can, as deeply as you can, because we come together and make a thing that's bigger than your problem, right? And so it's a, it's a, it's a more intimate exchange where you take the time, right? And so, because people don't understand how they build these problems, especially chronic problems. I'm not talking about like, okay, you went out and played tennis and you got tennis elbow. I'm talking about you got a degenerative shoulder or a knee or you got kidney stones, or your blood pressure is high, these kind of physiological dynamics. So what I specialize is in the chronic pain and acute pain condition. I'm treating it every day, knees, necks, back, shoulders, bursitis, arthritis, you know, their neuralgias, all that kind of conditions because that's what comes through my door. And I've gotten really well at that using acupressure, sometimes using herbs, definitely using uh, acupuncture and the acupressure together. Gastrointestinal issues, I put that on here because a lot of times people, I mean, nowadays people can access information and figure things out themselves, but a lot of times they don't understand the workings of what happens in the digestive track and if you just make a few changes you can have a profound effect on what's happening with some of the more milder symptoms like gas and bloating and such I'm not talking about like I have clients that have autoimmune conditions in their digestive tract that have to get an IV every eight weeks for the rest of their life we're managing it then right we're not going to cure that but it can be that extreme uh, and a lot of hormone stuff too you know the infertility is is a big deal it's a lot of money to do the in vitro so I get probably two dozen women a year with that issue and it's remarkable how many times they will be able to conceive some clinics specialize in that because um, again you're not treating infertility you're treating the individual to bring them back into homeostasis to see if you know you can allow for what should be able to happen in a natural state happen and there's a lot of reasons how they can get out of balance with that but these three things are predominantly and I see 70 patients a week have been doing that for almost 30 years just a quick, you know, a little bit about the history. We don't, it's a short talk, so we won't do a deep dive into this, but, you know, they found that Iceman, uh, you know, about five, six years ago, 10,000 years old, had tattoos on him, wooden sticks right up in the Alps. We know this goes back 10,000 years or maybe even more. They didn't have MRI machines and x-ray machines and PET scans, right? So some of it seems barbaric, but it kept people alive. And they dealt with famines. They dealt with, you know, um, pain conditions. There was a lot of war happening a lot of kind of uh, food poisoning and things like that. So used to be stones, sticks, um, 
uh, fish bones. That's kind of what needles were made out of. But basically, you're, you know, you're using these things as a way to evoke a reaction from the body, which I'll, I'll talk about. So, you know, mostly what we focus on in regards to our training is probably about from 4,000 years up to now in regards to the kinds of texts that are available. A lot of people don't know that this came into the United States by President Nixon was doing a tour in 1970, looking at the hospitals and stuff, and he saw remarkable things. Like, you can go on YouTube and watch him do an open heart surgery using no anesthesia except for acupuncture. You see the, you see the heart beating, they gotta stop the heart, you know, sew up the hole, for example, get it going again. They've done over 300 of these. Different culture, over here, we're like, what? You know, that doesn't make sense, but it's not. But the idea is, is that he saw this, he wanted it here, he had a New York Times writer with him, the guy got appendicitis, they had to do, uh, you know, take the appendix out, but they helped him with the pain so significantly with the acupuncture, he wrote an article about it, and, uh, Kiss and then Kissinger mentioned it in a briefing, and they opened up the first school in uh, 1972 in California. So that's how it kind of seeped over here to the States. Billions of people use it. Uh, NIH says it's effective for over 60 different issues. Again, that's partly because you're not treating the diagnosis, you're treating the individual. Um, and that number's growing. So real quick, you know, what is it? Acu means body. Puncture is puncture. Acu, body, pressure, pressure, right? So what happens is, in Chinese medicine, it's a little more metaphoric. They talk about energy and qi and dynamics. Sounds a little bit more like poetry because they never saw the body as separate from nature. So when you have a problem, they would look at you and see what else is going on in your life, which I think is kind of making a resurgence because as we see disease rising, we need to look at these kind of dynamics, even though a lot of times individuals want a quick change. More contemporary-wise, acupuncture point has fluid and minerals inside of a little sac underneath your dermal level. When you put a stain, piece of stainless steel needle in there, you're not supposed to have your skin punctured. It's trauma. It's microtrauma. It's like a bee sting or mosquito bite, not in the feeling, but when that enters in, immediately your body goes, holy cow, are we going to live or die, right? We're not supposed to be invaded, but that sets off a hypervigilant reaction where your nervous system, your immune, and your vascular system respond to that, and the nerve ending there with you know, without getting too technical, the bifurcated nerve takes it back to the nervous system and immediately you start to try to heal that wound. So if you have a sore back and I put needles in there, the increased circulation is going to pull acids, pull debris left over from that sprain or strain. You know, when you sprain or strain, you're actually kind of ripping cells and then like lactic acid and things leak out. So you're increasing this vascular intensity of bringing nutrients for healing and carrying out debris that's there, especially with chronic problems. Um, so I'm being hired to use a system to evoke a reaction, and that reaction is done through me piercing your body with a tiny needle. Now, does it hurt? No, otherwise I wouldn't be able to buy groceries, right? I mean, it sounds like it because we've all been programmed, oh, needles, right? But I make sure that that's not the experience because that's not what it's about, especially nowadays with higher quality kinds of metals and techniques. So that's an acupuncture point. The meridian is these channels that you see that run next to the nerves. They're not the nerves. People ask me all the time, oh, are you putting the needle in the nerve? No, we're not putting the needle in the nerve, right? Because that's going to create a lot of pain. You're putting it next to it, creates a little bit of um, what they call an eddy current, like a little, a little wave uh, when that punctures the minerals. And that's what, how it's picked up and carried back. So we go to school to learn where are these points and what do they do. If a woman's got anemia, we know to do these points. You've got a headache on this side of your head, there's these kind of points. It's a map. You've got a headache, sinus trouble, we do those. So that's kind of how that works. And then this is really, you know, so basically what we're doing is, you know, we're increasing these endorphins in the body that are 200 times stronger than morphine. That's why you can watch these videos on YouTube and see them cutting a person open only with anesthesia and the person talking to you. So that, they test the blood before, they test it afterwards. So, you know, it regulates serotonin, norepinephrine. You know, these are hormones that are important for a lot of well-being, the body reduce stress and help, you know, regulate what happens with dilation. So immune system is increased, cortisol levels are lowered, and inflammation goes down. So it's a fantastic aid for dealing with acute or chronic problems. One of the points I want to make is that a lot of times people don't realize that all your systems are connected. Nervous system, digestive system, hormone system. You can't have a problem in one and not affect the other. So a person will come to me complaining of a symptom and then they have a problem over here, you know, in their digestion, but then they have, you know, nervous system stress. You have to look at all that in order to really treat it in a way where you don't just get some relief for a day or two, but the person actually starts shifting back towards well-being. That's the difference be between holographic and holistic medicine. And that's kind of where I have, you know, uh, really kind of shine with the ability is to be able to sort that out just from doing that for so long.
So I, I want to say something. This is kind of the juicy part or the part that I get sort of the most passionate about because a lot of times people don't take the time to look at this and that has to do with what is a symptom? Well, okay, so it's an indicator that tells you that, you know, somehow you're in error. But actually how a symptom, now I'm talking about a chronic, a chronic problem, you know? Uh, okay, I got digestive issues, I make kidney stones, my blood pressure is high, chronic headaches, whatever it may be. You have a conscious mind and an unconscious mind. The unconscious mind runs the body. That you don't think about your breathing, you don't think about your heart rate, you don't think about your eyes changing and dilating and constricting. What happens is, is when you're not paying attention to what happens in our lives, when we can't get in touch with that, what will happen is the unconscious will actually divert you by making a symptom so that you aren't able to, because you can't confront what you're really feeling that's in the unconscious. The problem is the unconscious is developed by the time you're 35 years old, all your paradigms and your judgments and your opinions and your biases, 95% of the body is run by the unconscious part. So when a person comes to me and I have a shoulder problem, it's amazing to me if I say, well, you know, I'm talking like for months or years. Why do you think you have that? I don't know. So how does a person have a problem and not understand how they have it? You have to look at your life, right? Every conversation that you have, especially, you know, over the last few days if it's gotten worse. What's frustrating you? Relationship? The job? You hear, you know what happens when a person says a symptom? What they do is they'll tell you, oh yeah, my shoulder is so annoying. Oh, my digestive system, you know, it just really worries me. The symptom will actually dramatize what it is that you're doing that's actually causing that. So if you know somebody that's got a chronic problem, like, you have to look at what the feelings are underneath there in order to really change that. You know, like my, my fiance said to me the other night, well, how, how are you feeling about this? And I felt a little bit of anger about the fact that I even had a feeling about something. There's a whole condition out there where people get conditions over a period of time, they don't even know what they feel anymore. You change that, you don't need no practitioner. You don't need anybody on the outside. And that I know because I see it day in, day out. So this is what I was just telling you about these deeper dynamics. So, you know, your unconscious is running 95% of you and the 5% is on the top. So if you get ill, you know, somebody doesn't get bone on bone. I got bone on bone, so I have to get the gel injections like my mother. Yeah, you got to get the gel injections for your knee, but what happened over the prior 10 years that you got bone on bone? So can you sensitive, set, with a lot of sensitivity, check on a more constant basis on how you're feeling? The key is to decondition. We got society telling us what to think, you got the news, you got people's opinions, you know, we have, we have our reactions all the time. Who gets quiet enough to really check and see if you need to change something? Yeah, no, I don't want to quit my job. How am I going to do that? I don't want to quit doing Pilates every day of the week. Oh, okay, yeah, but you're, you're paying the price for it. So change is not easy. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a, it, it takes emotional insight and belief realization and gathering and you know, changing your, you know, your truths that are underneath. These are the kinds of dynamics that take a lot of work, but if you don't change that, then you know, what I'm saying is, is long-term wise, we're gonna see more disease. Look, I'm, I'm not, I don't have time to talk today, like for example, about the tremendous amount of toxicity in the environment, people that aren't getting sleep, people that don't gather as families, things that keep cultures alive well over 100 years old. But what I'm saying is, is that if you have a chronic issue that's afflicting you, have to find a way to get more intimate about where the source and the cause of that is. And there's lots of ways to do that. You do that, and then people can actually actualize and be who they really are, not something less. And that's kind of what I'm interested in. So the kind of the sum this up a little bit or finish up is, so one of the magical things about acupuncture that I see day in and day out is it puts people's brain waves into a little bit of alpha. They fall asleep or they get just right in that twilight, twilight state. That's where non-arousal and tranquility and relaxation and where the unconscious and the conscious can start communicating. That's when people get up off the table. They're not apt to just put their caps on and start reacting and identifying with the same roles. Yeah, mommy, daddy, business person, you know, I got children and stuff. But there's something more than that. When you allow for that ease to come in, then what happens is the body comes back into balance and then whatever the affliction is starts to diminish. And that's, that's the part that I really love to see because then we're helping people be who they are. Finishing up with the quick questions that people ask about acupuncture is, you know, does it hurt? No, it doesn't hurt. The most of, if you haven't had it, the most a person feels a dull ache or a little uh, electrical signal if you feel anything for a second or two. And like I said, most of the time people drift off, which is where we need them to be in order to bring down cortisol and the kinds of things that make inflammation. How many treatments will I need? 
What I do is I sell people six, six hours worth of work on a chronic problem will help me and them determine how well this modality might be able to help them, whether they're going to be all good to go after six hours or they're going to need more or something else. I'm not going to waste anybody's time or money if it's, you know, if it's something I think they need uh, to find solutions in a different modality, I'll tell them. How long will it take the treatments to work? I just kind of said that. Usually after six treatments, that's the magic number. You'll, you'll be able to tell tangibly what kind of changes are happening. Usually what I look for is, you know, I look for a person to say, MB, you know, how are you feeling today? Ah, much better. Oh, okay, good, we're getting there then, right? So that's, that's, that's my marker. How often should I be treated? If you have a chronic problem that's afflicting you or your attention is on it, because that's the other key point. You have a problem, let's say, go back to the shoulder, and you keep thinking about the shoulder and talking about it, you know, that's the worst thing that you could do because that'll put you in the trap. I'm not saying don't be smart about it and get the data, okay, you know, uh, what it's there, but then you got to get off of that. So treat it twice a week in order to break the pattern, just like going to the gym to, you know, get in shape. Do it often enough that you're actually shifting something. What does it cost? Acupuncture out here is like a plumber, it's like a mechanic, you know, it ranges from $60 to $120. I have different packages depending on what people are doing. Insurance does cover it, a lot of it, Cigna, Aetna, we do a lot of business with Humana. It takes five minutes to figure that out because, um, you know, we just use an electronic service to do that. We talked about what it can treat, you know, really, I'll try to make anybody feel better. If they're, if they're 85 years old and they're on 12 or 13 medicines, that might, that's usually the only time that I see that it doesn't give them some tangible benefit because the body's not reacting the same way physiologically when you have that many chemicals in there. And I do get those clients, right? But you get somebody that's sick or ill and you give them 5% relief, they have so much gratitude for that because when you're feeling like that, you know, you start, I, just a quick story, you know, I had a man come and cry, 87 years old, he's crying in front of me because he went out in the garage the night before because he was trying to figure out in the garage how to end his life because the headache pain that he had was so bad he'd been to 12 doctors and no one could help him. He's crying because he wanted to end his life. I said, wait a minute, that don't sound right. Let's take a look at this. I looked at his neck, blah, 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 checked him out. His blood pressure was like almost 200 over something. I said, you don't need me. You got to get out of here and get to your cardiologist right now. I'm supposed to call 911. It's so bad, right? Call me two days later. Feeling better, thank you, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, stories, stories like that where sometimes people aren't getting what they need or people aren't taking the time. He, you know, one little last PS on that just to kind of complain. He's in front. He didn't want to go to his cardiologist because when he goes to his cardiologist, he's so busy. The cardiologist is looking down. The cardiologist says to him, well, how's things? How's your family? He says to him, well, my son just died. He goes, oh, okay, good. Never even heard him say that, right? <laughs> he didn't want to go back and see him. <laughs> So, is there any risk? The only risk is you don't get a miracle, you know, if that was to happen. Um, you know, there's no downside. That's why I sell people six, because, you know, if it's not helping them at that point, which usually doesn't happen, then I don't want them to waste their time or money. Medicare's coming. They're doing a new thing with the NIH right now. I reading the other day, going to go after the opioid issue with uh, low back pain. So, they're looking at it for solutions. So, they'll find a place in the, in the club for us here uh, at some point. Um, so that's kind of it. You know, health is like money. We never have a true idea of its value until we lose it. And, you know, lastly, man, you talk to people out there. Everybody wants 5,000 things. I want this. I want that. I want that. But when they're sick, they only want one thing. Right? And so when you can help, when you can, you know, all of us help each other be better by, you know, supporting and understanding that it's okay for you to do your personal work. And if you're having a physical symptom, you need to make some changes quickly and intensely. And if you do that and use something like acupuncture to accelerate that, which I see every day, then, you know, I think that's probably the work of the human species, why we're here. Yeah, you know, you buy a car, you have a house, you have kids, you go out and eat pasta, but what's the real work? What's the juicy stuff? What are you working on? How are you being better, right? And that's, that's the stuff I like. If a person's got a problem, you know, you go to talk to the Indians, been treating people for 20,000 years. They're like, oh, you're doing the work, right? Not like, oh, oh I got this, ah. No, do the work, get into it, right? That's, that's what it's about. All right, so that's pretty much it. I don't know if anyone has any questions who we could cover. Uh, I've always been very curious. Um, who manufactures the needles? Yeah. Mean, do, you, do you have to go to a specialty manufacturer? Do you go to a, uh, a company that manufactures other medical devices? Who, I'm, yeah. I'm just curious. So uh, now it's considered a class one, the needle itself, medical device. Prior to that, it wasn't, but that changed some of the insurance uh, 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 reimbursement too. 
And so they are manufactured in China okay. and they have their own standards and then they're distributed usually to California and then we buy from medical providers, you know, uh, that sell a number of different kinds of medical uh, equipment. But that's where they come from. They're usually an amalgam, you know, it's mm -hmm. different. Japanese have their own kind, Chinese have their own kind of needles. They come all blister wrapped. I don't know if you've ever seen them or not, but uh, then we have to put them into biohazardous. Anyone else? No, okay. All right, well thank, thank you, you again so much. much. Thank you. Thank you.